Hello everyone. It's time to do some printing. But before I do, I need a bed probe. I used to have a bed probe, this one. But this will not work anymore. So I just made a few pieces of metal here. So this is number one with a 200 ohm resistor. This is number two where I just put some weight in it. So I can put this on top of the bed. And I had to find a little piece of pressed plastic, something like this, where I can fit the spring on top, like so. And now I have to put these together in this fashion with some isolation tape. So I'm going to do that. First I'm going to put this here. Isolate the whole thing. work well I sure hope so and I made this resistor in between to limit the current a bit I drilled a hole in here as well in this piece of metal and put in a screw and I pointed it made it a bit pointy with with this dremel here and now it will always touch the same spot that's pretty important for accuracy just for the ones that are not familiar with safety Drilling, drilling a metal sheet can be a bit dangerous. So let's drill into this hole here. Let's find out. As you can see, it's, it swings around. There you go. That's lovely, isn't it? So as you can see here, the drill actually grabs hold of the metal sheet. It doesn't cut through it entirely. It doesn't drill it anymore. It just grabs it. So there's a real danger there so what you should do in fact is clamp it down so why would I need a bed probe well if you take a look at the design of the 3d printer right here and let me just remove the surrounding area like that um, this would be the gantry I'll just select the entire gantry like this and uh, this is uh, moving along four linear rods, right? So, but the, the weight of this gantry uh, bends the rods a little. These are 12 millimeter hard, hardened steel rods, uh, 80 centimeters long. And I figured that would be sufficient, but it does, well, sag a little. So, uh, the z-axis, which is this direction here, needs to compensate for that with these two motors below here's a stepper motor and back there is a stepper motor so i'm going to measure the bed at 49 locations and in a grid of seven by seven points and uh, yeah these will have to compensate for the deviation the height deviation in that so here's my printer room and here's 3d this is the first printer that we made. It's literally made from scrap. But it did a good job because it printed these parts here, these red parts all, and it enabled us to build a bigger 3D printer. And this is going to be demolished. Most of it is going to be used for a new design, including some new parts like linear rails. And that would be a big improvement. Anyway, here's where we're going to probe the bed. We need to connect this probe, these two wires, with uh, the Z end stop. Let's launch this printer like that. And uh, 
you see how any stock is located back there very sneaky and it's hard to reach so let's move over to the board and uh, we're going to we're going to replace this connector here which is the ZN stop and I made some adjustments to it I put a uh, M5 screw here, 5mm so there's a flat area on top and that's where the nozzle will land hopefully so I attach this to the board here these wires and I only need two signal and the ground and as you can see there's also a Raspberry Pi in there and here I'm working on the Arduino Duo on the Raspberry Pi inside the printer now let's take a look at how we are going to do the bed leveling this is uh, the Arduino IDE and uh, I moved over to the configuration file in the Marlin firmware that runs on this printer. And this is Marlin firmware 1.0 something. There is a newer version out that's 2.0. And I plan to upload it to this Arduino Do in the near future. But at this point, I'm just working with Marlin 1.0. Marlin 2 obviously has a lot more bed leveling options than Marlin 1, by the way. So there's that. I have my bed defined at 450 millimeters along X and Y as to the size. Match bed leveling is turned on here. And down here you have the number of points you would like to measure, which is 7 points along X and 7 points along Y, which accounts for 49 points. Let's take a look. And for the first thing that we're going to do now is, uh, well, level the bed. So uh, let's move over to the serial monitor in the tools menu. Opening this up will reveal a bunch of coordinates all set to Z0. And that's re with regard to bed leveling. These are the adjustments of, on the bed. So uh, yeah, let's start out with the probe. right here. I'm just going to move it to the side. Uh, let's home X and Y axis. G28, that's homing. Sorry, G28, homing. X and Y. Enter. There we go. And let's put the probe underneath like this. I'm not sure if you can clearly see this. Let me add in another camera here. Okay, this one for instance. Um, and I'm going to put it here. It's not the best, but uh, it does show an up-close picture here. So let's try the homing of the Z axis now. G28Z. There it goes. So it, now it's at zero. Let me look at the status. M114. Everything is set at zero down here. Great. So now let's move back, back up. G1Z2 with a moderate feed rate, slow feed rate of 100 millimeters per minute. There it is. And there's this thing. If bed leveling is enabled in Marlin, the Z at and stop don't work. So le let me just move to G, Z1, no, to minus one. And you can see what happens. As you can see, it just pushes through and it doesn't stop. So, uh, yeah, you have to enable bed and, uh, the end stop manually. So let's move back up again. G1Z2. 
2. And now enable the end stop. M120. That's enabling end stops. Let's try again. G1, Z minus 1. So it hits the bed probe at Z minus 0.02 millimeters. That's pretty accurate in my opinion. I think this end stop is doing better than I could expect. So now that's done. And let me remove this camera. We're going to level both ends here and here. So let's just home once again. Right here. G28 Z Move the nozzle up. It's making a bit of noise there. Okay. G1 Z1 Feet rate 100 And now we're going to see if this one if it's uh, the same height out here as it is out there so to keep this level G1 X 450 let's make it a feed rate 3000 speed things up a bit move the probe there and see how high up it's here okay I'm gonna enable the M stops M120 and now move downwards G1, Z minus 1 with a low feed rate of 100 and see where it ends up at. Okay, minus, well, half a millimeter. So this means uh, it traveled longer downwards here than it did there. So this one traveled one and a half millimeter downwards compared to one millimeter distance here. So we have to lower this thing here. So let's just move it up a bit. G1, Z2 for instance. Now I'm disabling the stepper motors, M81. And uh, now I'm gonna twist this trapezoid, uh, this lead screw here a bit to move it further down half a millimeter like that okay let's see how it's doing now let's home again and well I could just move it back and forth trying to adjust this but I could also make it a, a g-code file so I don't have to repeat this entire process again and again so let's do that let's write a g-code file so basically I just opened notepad and we're going to write some g-code First off, when you start with G-code, you should you probably don't know where the nozzle is at that point where the extruder is at. So the first thing you could do to be safe is, for instance, G1, Z1 with a feed rate of 100. Then let's just home the x-axis and G28, X, Y. We need to give the user time to set the, uh, the probe below it, so we're going to say M zero which is uh, wait for user interaction that's just pressing a button anyway once that's done you can press the button you have the probe set G28 Z and then just move G1 Z 1 feed rate 100 so it moves up a bit and well after homing you should uh, enable end stops each time you home, uh, end stops are disabled. Well, that's what I think. I'm not sure, but I think that's uh, what's happening. So M120. So this is what it is right now. Now I move over to the right side, G1X450 feed rate. Well, I can even make it 3600 millimeters per mi minute. And then we have to wait for user input to put the probe back again, M0, and uh, then move downwards, G1, Z-1 with a feed rate of 100. And guess what, we have to turn off the end stops, uh, the stepper motors, so M0. 
81. Uh, let's just move it upwards again. G1, Z1, F100. Oh, I already used F100, you don't have to repeat that again. And then turn off the stepper motors. So this should be some G code to level the bed on left and right. So let me just save it. L dot G, L as in level. Save. Let's see how this works out. Okay, let's start up the file. That's going to be G code M23 space L dot G. I made it short, so that's easy. And see what happens. Nothing, because I have to start the file. That's M24. I only selected the file up to now. So now I'm just press MT24. It moves to 1. I've got the probe set, so that's good. Okay. Now it's waiting for user, so I just press this button. And now it's homing. It's moving over to the other side. I can put the probe back there too. It's waiting for the user once again. I just press the button. And it hit the end stop at Z.14, so now it's a bit too low. Anyway, I'll level the bed and get back to mesh bed leveling. So now we have to actually do exactly the same thing for multiple points on the bed. Actually, 7 points by 7 points. And then you can define these points in a G code file like this. G29 F3. And then you provide the X and Y probe point. And well, X1, Y1 would be uh, zero because that's the homing position. So that should be zero. And now we can just probe uh, X2, I1, which is well, uh, 450 millimeters divided by seven probe points, or actually divided by six, is 75 millimeter distance for each probe point. So let's make a file and find out what the height differences are over, over the bed. So uh, this needs a little bit of an adjustment. X would be 75. And that's basically all we need to do for the first probe point. So let's just save it as, well, X2, Y1. Save. Now we change this to 150, 150, and save it as X3, Y1, and we continue like this, 225, uh, wait a minute, we don't need M81, now this for instance would be X2, Y2. So you move to 75, 7, Y 75. So, well, this sh should be it. And I've compiled an entire list here. Here's the entire list. And we're going to put these on the SD card and probe the bed at all of these spots. So now the first probe point should be X2, Y1. So let's move to the serial monitor for a moment and type in M23 X2 Y1 dot G. File selected M24 and let's run it. So it's homing. That takes some time. So now I'm moving my probe here. Uh, let's press the button. Now it's homing. And it's moving to the first probe point there at 75 millimeters. So that's pretty simple. Just put it in here. 
press the button. It's at Z 0 0.29. So I can just select this and then copy it and then paste it in this at this area here. So next would be X3, Y1, but let's try this another time to see how its repeatability is. Um, let's move to the serial monitor once again. And let's try it once more. G, or sorry, M23, X2, Y1 dot G. File selected, M24, wrong file. Let's move this thing over there again. Yeah, press the button. Moving to X 75 millimeters here. It's at 0 0.27. Well, 29, 27. It's not much of a deviation. This, this probe is pretty good. I had worse results with, with the optical end stops even, so yeah, I kind of think that these probe points will do fine. So uh, I've been looking through uh, these values and it doesn't seem like it's sagging much at all, it's just a bunch of random numbers well, seemingly. So it's not really only the sagging, there's more going on here, I don't think it's sagging that much. Um, what I think let me pick the camera up for a moment. What I think, well, this first off, this 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 glass is not. It's not uh, borosilicate or quartz or ceramic. It's uh, it's actually hardened glass or plain glass, something. And what I have noticed about it is that the glass is not even. Uh, exactly flat. It's uh, it's thicker in some areas than in others. So that attributes to these measurements as well. And then if I'm going to look at the top here, here's the lead screw in the back, and uh, it's not uh, in line with uh, these two rods, and it's a little bit bent. So I think it has something to do with that as well. So, uh, yeah, anyway, let's take a look at uh, mesh bed. Let's continue mesh bed leveling once again. Let's take a closer look at what happens with uh, the Z axis down here. Um, first off, I'm going to move to the serial monitor and I'm gonna well I could home X and Y G28 X Y like that let me position the camera somewhere else for a moment here's the sharp coupler down here and uh, I'm going to exaggerate the mesh level a bit I'm gonna say G29 S3 X2 Y1 Z2 millimeters. So let's see what the status is. I'm going to turn on bed leveling M420 S1. S0 would turn off bed leveling, S1 would turn on bed leveling. Now G29. S0 would show the status of the mesh bed, the values, and down here you can clearly see I set it at 2. So now let's move this thing a bit. G1X75, and let's do it a bit slowly, F200 or so, and you can clearly see what happens. I hope. You see those the coupler turning back there.
it's turning clockwise at the moment. So let's move to 150. G1 and a bit faster. X 150, another 75 millimeters and a feed rate of 500 or so. And now it's turning counterclockwise. So it's actually uh, compensating for height difference in, in the bed or in the gantry or whatever it might be wrong with, with it. And uh, let's move back to zero once again. G1 X zero. So at this point it's it's rotated clockwise and once it gets to 75 it's turning the other way around and it's working. So basically that's that leveling. So there's basically several things you can do with this. You could say for instance uh, you can add them to the slicer post processor, these G-codes, or just include them in your uh, 3D print G-code. Or you can hard code them into Marlin, or you can make it a separate file and start that separate G-code file before printing it. So I just wrote this in front of it, NQ command, and then below here you could say NQ command uh, M420 S1 terminal mesh pad leveling like this. Then I just copy this part here into Marlin. I just move over to the Marlin main program and then I'm gonna look for Ctrl F find void setup. Find. Now this is the setup part of the Marlin program and I don't know if this works with Marlin 2. But I just double click here and it will take it will just select the whole block setup block and at the end of it I could just paste this and that's that and upload it and once you did you can move to the serial monitor and you will see a whole bunch of okays there so it had accepted all these G codes, these are bed level G codes into Marlin, and you're set. Well, the result. Let's take a look. Well, it's 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 printing, and uh, it's firmly connected to the surface, so that's good. It still needs some adjustment, but uh, yeah, I'm in overall, I'm pretty content with it. So, I can finally start printing stuff. And the first thing that I'm going to print, well, I think you can guess right now, is going to be a bed probe. And specifically one that I can attach to the nozzle. I've got the volcano nozzle here. It looks like this. And uh, this is, should be a fan on top of here. But I'm going to use, print something like this, to connect a bed probe to the nozzle. That would be... The most practical thing I guess. Next will be, well I've, I've got these magnets here and I do want to make a little bit of an experiment with induction heating. I've got a whole bunch of motors like these. Yeah, so I can print something for these motors and uh, see what they can do with induction heating with these little magnets. I'm not sure. Well let me move to the other room for a second. We're also working, me and a friend of mine, we're working on this Bulkman 3D CNC milling machine. This is a 2.2 kilowatt CNC mill. And yeah, I would like to document some of this on video as well. As well as well the demolishing and the new design 3D printer that's coming up. And of course, I'm interested in a lot of stuff, so uh, I might even plan to do some perpetual motion things, hopefully. So if you're interested in all of this stuff, uh, do subscribe, hit that bell button, and you will remain notified. For now, well, thanks for watching, and see you all later.